John is an accountant for a famous beer brewing company. The company has a large machine that bottles the beer and is an essential asset for the company. Ten years ago, the company bought this machine for a hundred million dollars. This machine is recorded at fair value and depreciated in 20 years according to the straight line method without residual value. Every year the value of the machine decreases by 5 million dollars. After 10 years the book value is 50 million dollars and has an expected lifetime of 10 years remaining. After an inspection of the machine, the actual expected lifetime turns out to be 5 years longer. John adjusts the expected lifetime of the machine, which leads to lower depreciation in the remaining years. Now John is wondering what he should have done when the expected lifetime would become shorter instead of longer. Should he book a loss immediately, or should he spread the loss by increasing the depreciation over the remaining years of the expected lifetime? Accounting conservatism provides an answer to John's question. This is what the paper The Conservatism Principle in the Asymmetric Timeliness of Earnings by Basu 1997 is about. According to the Accounting Conservatism Principle, accountants should anticipate no profits but anticipate all losses. But what is the role of accounting conservatism? There is information asymmetry between managers and the market. Therefore, managers have some opportunities and incentives to withhold negative information from the financial statements. Managers can thus recognize future profits immediately while postponing future losses. Accounting conservatism emerged to prevent managers from acting this way. Bazu interprets conservatism as earnings reflecting bad news more quickly than good news. In the example of John, this means you should book the loss on the reduced expected lifetime immediately. As a result, earnings decrease in the current year but remain constant over the remaining lifetime. When the lifetime increases with 5 years, John should not book again immediately but spread the remaining depreciation over 15 years instead of 10 years. Therefore, depreciation costs per year are lower and earnings higher. So we see. Bad news is reflected more timely in earnings than good news. Basel used data from American firms from 1963 to 1990 to test four hypotheses considering the conservatism principle. Every hypothesis is tested with different models and different sample sizes. Basel came to the following conclusions. First, Basel finds that publicly available bad news such as a decrease in useful lifetime of an asset, is reflected more timely in earnings. Future losses that arise from bad news are booked immediately, while future profits that arise from good news are not captured in current year's earnings. The second conclusion is that both bad and good news have slightly no effect on cash flows, but bad news does impact current earnings. According to the accounting conservatism principle, bad news is immediately reflected in earnings through accruals, which are not included in the cash flows. His third finding is that positive earnings changes are more persistent than negative earnings changes. Negative earnings changes are recorded in one year, while positive earnings changes are not recognized immediately, but spread out over future years. Therefore, this positive change influences earnings over a longer period. Since positive earnings changes are more persistent, these changes are more likely to appear again in the future. Therefore, a positive unexpected change in earnings has a larger impact on the stock market's reaction than an equal negative change that is less likely to be persistent. Thank you for watching. Created using Powtoon.